I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Ugo Aronu, the CEO of Zend Finance. Ugo, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Thank you very much, Ashton. I really appreciate this. I'm very happy to be here. Likewise, I'm excited for our discussion. Let's just dive right into it by starting with an overview and the focus of Zend Finance and the problems that your team is solving for. All right, great. Um, so uh, Zen Finance um, is actually a DeFi platform for cooperatives and for credit unions. The idea behind Zen Finance is to provide um, a platform for these um, cooperatives and credit unions to be able to earn interest in stable currencies and also earn um, Zen tokens as rewards you know, when they save or perform some operations on the Zen Finance protocol. And um, Zen Finance as a platform is actually aggregating different lending protocols to be able to give very high yields mm. to these cooperatives and credit unions. Okay, and now one very interesting thing about Zen Finance is um, the audience that we're targeting. So we're actually targeting people who are not crypto savvy, people who don't even understand the value, or who don't understand crypto, but people who need the value that crypto has to offer, mm -hmm. right? People who are living in um, financially, um, on the, who are financially underserved, people who are living in unstable economies. These are people that really need the real value of crypto. These are people that really need to have their assets protected. People who are living in, uh, who have faced multiple devaluations, like where I come from, like Nigeria, we're based in Africa. You know, these are people that need it. And that is why we created Zen Finance to solve these problems. And we are super excited to like have made this here. That was like a, a brief overview on, on Zen Finance. Definitely. And that's a great intro, Ugo. Thank you for that. And what I find really interesting that you mentioned is the credit unions and, you know, getting smaller businesses. And it usually decentralized finance are focused on very consumer level, which you are as well, but it's interesting to throw in, you know, credit unions and banks and things like that, which need to get involved in this and they need to get up to speed as well. Um, can you talk about why you chose that alley to, to start Zen Finance in? Okay, yeah. So the answer to that question is, um, I'm actually a part of a, a credit union. Uh, I belong to a cooperative myself. You know, my mom um, and a lot of people I know belong to different cooperatives here in Nigeria. Actually, um, cooperatives and credit unions have um, assets, okay, globally worth over, managed assets worth over $2.2 trillion, right? The market size is over $1.4 trillion. It's, it's actually a market where a lot of people don't really, um, or a lot of blockchain or crypto projects have never really focused their attention. And bringing this back to um, Nigeria, bringing this back to Africa, you know, we, we've realized that these are people that really need um, DeFi. These are people that really need the value that crypto has to offer. Now, because most of these unions, most of these um, cooperatives come together to do things like savings, they come together to take loans, you know, to help them start up a project, to help them support their family, pay their kids through school, right? But these credit unions usually don't even get a lot of support from financial institutions because most of them are even unregistered, right? Most mm -hmm. of them are actually operating in like an informal, but that is where a lot of liquidity, you know, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of value there. And we realized that if these credit unions, right, still operate in this manner, they are going to phase out with time because mm -hmm. they are not getting real value. They are not getting support. And this is why the blockchain was created. This is why we have DeFi. To be able to take people, right, from where they are, give them access to a global money market without going through things like um, the banks or going through any middleman, right? That is why we created, uh, that's why DeFi was made. And that is what mm -hmm. we are now taking to these people because they are the ones that really need it. They have a lot of value, but they are not getting what they are supposed to get. We, you know, they are not getting the real um, um, value out of what they are doing. They are not getting the real value out of their regular operations because, you know, the financial institutions are not able to really help them mm -hmm. or are not, or they are 
probably even taking so much from them rather than giving back. But now, the default all that is going to be in the past because they are going to be able to gain real access, actually protect their um, as, um, assets, gain very good APYs, and even end rewards, right, by actually leveraging DeFi. And we are there to create that gateway for them. So, Ugo, you talked about bringing value to the consumers and how you're connecting with multiple lending protocols to provide liquidity. Can you just talk a little bit more about what are these specific lending protocols, how it switches between them, and, and how consumers can access that easily? Okay, so um, there are different lending protocols. Um, you have um, Compound, you have A, you have um, Fulcrum, you have DYDX, you have D5 Dollar, you have things like M Stable. So um, there are different lending protocols um, currently, like on the Ethereum blockchain. So one of the things we're doing is um, we are aggregating these protocols right by moving funds right from one protocol. Let's say, for example, we look at all the protocols and we see the ones with the best um, APYs. So we just move funds from the current one and move it to that one with the best APY. So it can give the best um, um, payouts or the best interest to um, the users or to our users. And one of the things we've done in order to make this very easy right for us without trying to reinvent the wheel is by leveraging a protocol um yen finance so yen already does that for some of these protocols right so um it tried it actually reduced the amount of work we had to do okay by leveraging yen so for the remainder of the protocols that are not supported by yen we actually give our users the option users can actually just switch between those protocols as well yeah so this is how we're able to achieve this and as time goes on, we're actually even um, getting more partnerships with more protocols that give very good APY. So over time, we're going to have um, like a large array of, of multiple protocols that at every point in time, these users are getting very good APYs. And there's no limit really to how big their interest can be because that's the good thing about our protocol. We, we don't, let's say, shut out some interest and then keep some, you know, everything is open. So as much as it gets, it goes back to the users, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very interesting. And one of the things that's really being a big burden in the decentralized finance industry right now is the Ethereum transaction fees. And you know, when you get access to those decentralized markets, all of a sudden, it doesn't really work for you know the people that you're trying to target if you're using the Ethereum protocol, where if you're trying to do a micro loan or you're trying to do a twenty dollar transaction, you know the transaction fee is the same cost or even more right now. But I know that Zend is working into the Binance chain network and also just cross chain decentralized finance to try and solve these issues. And I guess be more of a business maximalist and find you know where can we find the best network. You don't need to work on Ethereum if that's not the best choice for you know Zen's protocols. Then we're not going to use that. Can you just talk about the cross chain DeFi strategy and 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 why you're choosing Binance as well to provide the best best value with these liquidity protocols? Yeah, very, very well. Um, very, very, very good uh, thing you pointed out there. So we're building on the Binance Smart Chain, actually, right? And we our testnet actually runs on the Binance Smart Chain, okay? And immediately the Binance Smart Chain got launched. I mean, we were very excited because we had built the first version as, of our system on the Ethereum blockchain. And of course, we know that um, Ethereum is plagued with some of these problems, such as very high fees, congestion of the network, you know, um, delay in transactions and some of these things. But then, you know, we've actually uh, built our testnet and we're going to be building the second version of our mainnet on the Binance Smart Chain. And why we chose the Binance Smart Chain is one, the Binance Smart Chain has um, cross-chain functionality, right? It's interoperable across multiple blockchains. Fees are extremely low, okay? Because fees are extremely low, you also have um, very fast transactions. It has like very high throughput, it's highly secure. So when you have multiple transactions, it doesn't mean that fees will, you know, go very high or go high like um, the Ethereum blockchain. And this really serves the kind of people we're actually trying to target. Just like people in Africa, people in the say Southeastern Asia and some other part regions of the world who have very small amounts of money. You don't expect them to spend maybe on a $10 transaction, spend $30 to process a $10 transaction. That's just outrageous. That's too high. So because of um, the Binance, because of the Binance Smart Chain and the features 
okay, it presents. It makes it very easy for us to be able to give much more value to our users, give them very cheap transactions and very fast transactions as well. And the beauty of the Binance Smart Chain is it's going to connect easily and seamlessly with the Ethereum blockchain, right, because of the um, interoperability. So we don't have any problems at all with having um, our, our projects, our protocol running on the Binance Smart Chain and on the Ethereum blockchain, right, because of the cross-chain functionality. It makes everything very seamless. So we're really excited to be working with the, uh, on the Binance Smart Chain, and we're also very happy that we're going to be giving these users access to very cheap transactions and very fast transactions as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be so interesting to see how this whole decentralized finance movement plays out because this is growing so exponentially, and you know, Binance has been growing uh, even more exponentially than than Ethereum in, the, in throughout 2021 in in this almost like a version two of decentralized finance, and I think that. You know, we're still at yeah. the very beginnings. It's going to explode. Now, one of the other ways that I see that Zen Finance is like adding more value to the consumers and just the protocol overall is the Zen token. I just want to touch on that briefly in terms of, you know, can you just describe the main functionalities of the Zen token inside of the ecosystem? And does it create a sustainable ecosystem for Zen? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so one of the um, functionalities of the Zen uh, token is uh, governance, right? So because of our, our system is actually a decentralized system, so we want people to be able to make a proposed votes, you know, vote on certain actions or maybe some parameter changes, and then those votes, uh, the, the, the code or the contracts that will affect those changes will be put in place. So governance is one thing. So it gives people the power to govern that protocol which is very essential, that's one. Two is with our tokens, people can actually stake. People can stake those tokens, right? So you can stake those tokens and actually earn some more tokens in future, right? So you can lock up the tokens. And another thing we do is um, rewards and you know the distribution of our tokens. So to make the protocol um, or to drive adoption, right? Instead of probably just giving out, you don't just distribute tokens for free. We encourage people to perform operations on the protocol and then earn tokens. For example, we have multiple saving strategies currently implemented. So as you perform a saving strategy, as you have um, um, deposits on, on, um, on our platform or on the protocol, as you have funds locked on the protocol within a certain period of time, you earn a certain um, fraction of um, tokens or certain fraction of Zen tokens. How it's implemented can actually be found on the light paper, right? So, and the code is actually going to be open source, so people can read it to see how everything works. So, we enable distribution of the Zen tokens where people perform operations, and this ensures the growth of the protocol because it makes people involved, it makes people earn interest in the stable currency, and also earn interest in our own tokens, right? So we pay our tokens to people as rewards for performing operations on the platform, which is very, very interesting. So these are like some of the um, functions or the utilities of our token. And these utilities will ensure that we have a highly sustainable ecosystem and a highly sustainable protocol over the years. Because this is something that we're here you know, for the long run. And we want people to, be, to also be here for the long run as well. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, Ugo. And yeah, I've been following Zend for the fat past few months here so far and what I've seen. And I know that you're already successful in you know the early stages of the project, private rounds, you're heading towards a TGE. And you know we're nearing the end of the show, but I want to talk about the future in terms of the next steps for Zend Finance. Can you just talk about the, the, the upcoming launch, the roadmap for the first half of 2021 and what things that you need to check off next on the list? Okay, yeah, so um, uh, uh, TG is something that um, a lot of people, you know, have actually are waiting for, you know, and from our roadmap, we're actually looking at having our TGE in Q1, okay, of, of, of 2021. One of other, well, the other thing we're actually working on currently on our roadmap is um, our SDK. So what the future really holds for Zen Finance is we are building a platform where existing um, fintech applications, traditional applications can plug in seamlessly right, without having to bother about the complexity of the blockchain, without having to bother about, you know, how things work at the back end of the blockchain. So we've, we are creating an SDK, which we're going to have a test version, 
available by um, the first or second week of March, currently working on it. So that SDK will enable people to integrate Zen Finance easily and have access to the DeFi uh, um, system, you know, without any barriers at all. So we are actually removing that complexity, you know, creating a better experience for users. And we intend to capture up to 10% of the credit union market, okay, in the next five to 10 years. So it's a long-term play. It's a huge market, right? And we believe that we have what it takes with the community. And we actually uh, we just announced an ambassador program because we're trying to have people in all parts of the world you know, who buy into our vision, help us implement and attract more users, attract more platforms to build on Zen Finance. So we actually announced a Zen Finance um, Warrior Ambassadors program where you have people representing us in different regions of the world. And it's going to be really cool. We are having like thousands of applications pouring in in less than like two days of announcing. So we're super excited about what the future holds with Zen Finance. We're going to be getting into all the regions of the world, starting from, you know, from Nigeria here. So it's really, really great what we've been able to, to achieve. Yeah. And where we are heading to, I'm, I'm super excited. Yes. Wow. There's a lot of great things to look forward to. And for the viewers that are looking to get involved with the Zen Finance community right now, um, you know, follow the project as these updates are coming out. What's the best way for them to learn more and to get involved? Yeah, the best way for them is actually to follow our Twitter handle at Zen Finance and um, our Telegram as well, you know, at Zen Finance. So they can also visit our website, uh, Zen.Finance, to learn more. And um, that's, that's basically it. Okay? Anything they need at all, they can get it from our Telegram, from our Twitter. And also subscribing to our newsletter is very important. Our newsletter has information that gets to the users before the rest of the community. So subscribing to our newsletter is something I must recommend. So you get a lot of information because most of the announcements, most of the things before they happen, you will get to hear about it. Yeah. Sounds great. I will leave all those links in the description box below uh, for the viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show, Ugo. All the best with Zen Finance moving forward in, throughout 2021 and beyond. And let's follow up in the near future. Thanks very much, Ashton. I'm, I'm really happy to have had this interview. I'm very excited and looking forward to having a great future with Zen Finance. Thank you very much.